finding the raw stock this size at an affordable price had been pretty difficult for me until the new neighbors moved in. See, the guy's British. Right. What did he say? He said, as his head, you know, he only chopped him down because he couldn't see the view no more. What's he mean, though? What did he say? He said an edge is an edge. He only chopped it down because it spoiled his view. What's Reaper moaning about? And with him, he brought a bunch of goats. <laughs> and one day, I found out that one of the goats has a superpower. <laughs> I just jump over the fence at night, sneak up on one of the goats, and boo! I will scare him. And he was <laughs> brick like this. On command. And you're probably wondering, what are we gonna make with something this size? Well, I tell you, we're gonna make a squareness comparator. And what is a squareness comparator? Well, it is a special indicator holder that you use on a surface plate like this typically and you use it to check the squareness of your parts. Sure, you can use one of these, but it'll only get you in the ballpark. His face, what in the world do we have here? And now, if that suits your application, great. But if your application uh, requires you to get sub-tenth of a thousandth, then you're gonna need to have a squareness comparator. And this is a linear motion shaft I got from McMaster. 7 8 of an inch in diameter and it's just like me. Really tough on the outside but nice and soft on the inside. And we're going to mount it right about there. Now you can buy this with ends already drilled and tapped from McMaster. But it increases the price by about four folds. I'm cheap. So I bought it with just rough ends and I'm going to use the ceramic inserts to machine through the hardened uh, outer casing. It's about Rockwell 50, uh, 60C. And we'll be able to tap and drill the inside. Or drill and tap. Whichever way comes first. compound set at 45 degree going that way we're gonna chamfer the top end of the rod We want to drill and bore where the main shaft is going to sit. We want to machine a little recess for the shaft to sit below the surface. And also we need to drill a clearance hole for the 3824 uh, mounting bolt screw. The shaft What's my name? is 0.875 inch, uh, inch in diameter. We want to recess about 75 thousandths. We're going to start with an end mill, go down 75, and then we'll finish uh, increasing the diameter with the boring bar. We're going to use my Narex facing boring head. I got the stops adjusted. Uh, so that it automatically stops after a certain diameter. Basically it's facing in that when you hold this portion right here, the clutch portion while the machine is running, it'll automatically advance the boring bar so that you can actually face a certain diameter. So here, <clears throat> here are the stops. 
this is a boring bar that I made in my last video so be sure to check it out I flip this over, this is the underside, we're going to machine a recess for the screw head. Perfect. Next we're going to work on the bottom, we're going to drill out three holes and we're going to lock tighten these hardened balls. Two of them towards the front and one in the back. Now this is a uh, 7 16 of an inch diameter. We need to be a little bit under that so we're probably gonna have to get close to it and bore it out with the boring head. out a pocket where the front bumper will recess into. We're going to continue on with missioning the bumper. As you can see this little tongue, I'm going to call it tongue, sits into this pocket. Now you saw me machine here a shoulder. I took it to the uh, disc sander and sanded a nice radius on both ends right here. Uh, it fits in there perfectly. Now we're going to dimension the width to match the width of the main base. Now that means we have to hold this off to the side of the vise and that means there's a danger of uh, racking the movable job device. That's why I'm using this small uh, mini machinist jack. Uh, there's a video, a couple videos back, I show you how I made that and it just comes in very handy in a situation like this to uh, provide even clamping uh, pressure against the movable jaw so you don't damage the device. We're going to work on mounting the front bumper to the base. Do some uh, additional milling on the base and then we'll take to the rotary table and machine a radius to that front bumper. Looking pretty good. We want to mill a nice decorative uh, groove. Groovy baby! Along the sides, three, the both sides on the back. Uh, this is the uh, round bull nose uh, D-bit uh, carbide divot that I ground up on my decal. Uh, if you want to know how I ground that, check out my uh, decal restoration uh, video. I'll put a link somewhere up here on the screen. And uh, it's going to be decorative, but it's also going to help with the grip as we, you know, grab it and move around. Groovy baby! We're gonna put a nice chamfer on the edges. Uh, we're using one of these uh, inexpensive carbide uh, chamfering bit. We got the work stop, work stop set up right there. So once we find the correct depth that we like, all we have to do is keep rotating the part and uh, 
set it against the work stop and as long as we don't move the table or the depth uh, we'll have a consistent chamfer all the way around I think I want to go a little deeper This is how it looks after all the edges were chamfered. This would be the bottom. I stopped short of the corner because that's where the bumper is going to be. Same thing with the front edge right here. Bumper is going to come up to there. I'm pretty pleased with the performance of that inexpensive uh, chamfering tool. We're going to machine an arc on the front bumper. I have the base mounted upside down with the front bumper material upside down as well so I can hold it down with these screws because the you know the other side is countersunk. So we're going to machine and we're going to do a uh, chamfer. <laughs> Uh, the holes are a couple thousandths undersized compared to the steel balls um, and we're going to put some Loctite 648 in there. I cleaned the holes and the balls with acetone to get rid of all the grease. Now we're going to use the vise to push it, the balls in, but we want to use uh, aluminum or something like that so the you're not pushing it with the vise jaws because it will dent your jaws. This is how the feet turned out. Just got done grinding. I say it looks pretty good. Now the main base is made out of mild steel, cold roll steel, so it's not hardened. But I did go ahead and grind it to make it look nice. So the three ball feet and the front bumper are hardened steel, which really is all that matters. A lot of finger smudges. Alright, let's put the shaft on and see how it looks. What's my name? Don Shaft! We're at the surface plate. I just want to see how it feels. 
feels pretty good, but it'll feel even better once we have additional weight hanging off towards the front uh, of the shaft once we have the upper sub-assembly completed. The three points of contact at the bottom ensures that we don't have any rocking motions or uneven surfaces. I mean, it, it should be pretty flat, but nothing is really flat. This is a dial test indicator that I'm going to be using. This is a Michitoyo 10th indicator. And it'll uh, stick out about that far in an angle like that. So that'll be nice. Overall, I'm very happy with it. So in the next video, we'll finish the project by building the upper sub-assembly. Now that we got the bottom half of the competitor done, I think it's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and comment. And don't forget to tune in for the second part.